they'd rather slap an extra tax on something, collect the money, than say to a farmer, you know what, we'd like you to go out and plant 40 trees. They're not asking for that, they're asking for money. This, and with everything, it is boiling down to money. And the biggest question is, where is this money actually getting spent? Because we're not seeing it. Their wages go up every year, but nothing else seems to go up at our end of things. My name is Morris and I farm up here in the hills in North County Tipperary. Three years ago I started my journey by purchasing what is probably one of Ireland's smallest farms and starting to bring it up to, I suppose, a modern standard and to, with the idea of hopefully creating a homestead. Along with that then I started posting up videos and photos on Instagram and Facebook under the, the name The Long Acre and The Long Acre Lifestyle, which is now a new startup business that I've set up online. And just my whole ethos has always been just to promote how farming and biodiversity are very much important and can be done together and still maintain that you can run a modern farm and a profitable kind of enterprise with both in mind. What will the effect of the Climate Action Bill be on farmers such as yourself? I think it's going to be all the regulations um, that it's going to bring in and how it's going to restrict us from ever expanding our enterprises and hopefully setting you know, setting down the platform where there's a future for young people, especially like me, in farming. There's a lot of young people who want to be involved in their family farm, but it's getting more and more difficult to be able to be involved when you're being told that you can't expand the business or you can't um, bring the business up to a modern level because of the different caps that have been put in. And uh, I think it's the fact that, you know, there's a lot of discrimination against farmers at the moment that somehow we are the big problem. Um, when that is not the case, it's just we've become an easy target by government um, to be able to be held up in front of people from the cities and say, well, this is the reason that you're paying a higher tax, basically. You know? Would you say that you're alone in your issues with the bill or would you say there are a lot of farmers who feel the way you do about these green policies? Now, look, I can't speak for all farmers, but I would say the vast majority, definitely over probably 95% of them, would have the same issues that I have um, when it comes to, you know, even basic things like being able to burn solid fuel in your home um, we don't have access to mains um, in most areas, so we wouldn't have mains gas. Um, we don't have them sort of options. So the ability to be able to burn turf or burn timber is kind of essential for heating your home. Um, cooking your dinners for a lot of people is still done on the likes of a range in their kitchen. And uh, I think that's why we all share the same idea. And it's not that farmers are against promoting the likes of, of habitat and things like that. We're not, but we're being taxed in such a way that you don't see where the money goes. We're not being asked to plant trees, we're just being asked to hand up money in a lot of cases. You did a video for the Farmer's Journal where you expressed some unhappiness with these policies and they cut that section out of the video when they finally uploaded it to their page. Why do you think the Farmer's Journal did that? I think because like a lot of media outlets in this country, um, they are bought out. Whether it is a case that it's with actual money, if it's not with actual money, I think it's just bought out through bullying. I think people are afraid to speak out in this country because anyone who does kind of stand up or stand out, they're very quickly cut down. Um, and that was even seen throughout the last two years in Ireland. Any experts who spoke up against government issues had medical licenses taken off them and they were cut off the register. That's the way Ireland is going. We're now becoming what I would call a diplomatic dictatorship. It's an option, but it's not an option anymore. So you think that applies as well to uh, farming newspapers yeah, and things like that? definitely, definitely. Because, you know, politics is so so much involved in Ireland. It's, it's a case nowadays that, you know, even our own, I think, associations are dealing a little bit too much with the likes of the politicians. And they're not, they're not representing what they originally were set up for. And I think the journal, you know, they were afraid maybe in what I said, even though it was very small, I said, Merely, you know, Eamon Ryan and the Lettuce Brigade were causing big problems for people in rural Ireland. And uh, they didn't want to highlight that issue um, because of maybe the repercussions it could have had on them. What do you think when you hear that as a farmer, you need to make all these compromises to your lifestyle and your business for the good of the planet, but then at the same time you see electricity guzzling data centres going up all over the country? Yeah, the likes of the data centres are an issue. Um, I don't think it's fair that people like me or other people in rural Ireland, even if it's a case that they're not farming, have to make these um, these sacrifices. You know, the one thing that the government do not want to speak about is the aviation industry. You look back in 2019, there was 38 million people flew in and out of Ireland, each of them carrying a, a, a carbon of about half a ton each per flight per person. And um, that's 19 million tons. The Irish agri-industry is creating 90 million tons, 
But what's never spoken about is the sequestration that we do. Irish agriculture is absorbing the largest amount throughout Ireland. And why is it always the case that it is just us in Ireland who have to always set kind of the forefront of, of being involved in the likes of these things. Um, and especially with the fact then, you know, that nobody else is having to do it. And uh, when you really look into it, where there's money, they're not being asked to comply with these things. That's what it basically boils down to. Big companies don't have to pay. Historically, as you know yourself, Fianna Fáil was always the party of small farmers with Fine Gael tending to favour bigger farms, but both of them had to appeal to the rural vote in one way or another. But now that they've kind of jumped into bed with the Greens, it seems like they're alienating a lot of their traditional voting base. So have you, in your own experience, noticed a drop-off in support for the old parties? I think there definitely is, especially amongst young people. Young people don't want to be... Um, supporting them anymore. They see that they're failing. Um, it's a case that, you know, people kind of hop out of one bed into the other and um, when each election comes around expecting a different result. But, you know, letting in the same people expecting a different result is, is, is only ever going, you know, it's going to give you the same outcome each time. And there's too many people involved in politics now. They've been on the, they've been on the platform too long. It's, it's time for change. It's time for younger people to be brought in. Um, and the fact then that they're, they're never brought uh, you know, to be held accountable for their actions is definitely the biggest problem in Ireland right now. Do you think that there's anyone who's really representing the political views of people like yourself in this country? Me personally, no. Um, I do think that there are very good independents throughout the country who are very willing to stand up and speak out and they do stand up for their constituents, um, especially with what happened in the likes of the Midlands. Um, it was only the independents who came to their saving, who actually spoke up and stood up for them. Unfortunately, it didn't change the outcome but at least I suppose they, they shared the voice of the people. Um, whereas, the, you know, your, your standard TDs sat quiet in the corners and just let it happen. You know, on that issue, we've seen many other industries negatively affected by these policies, like obviously the board of workers in the Midlands, as you mentioned, as well as the horticulture sector and so on. Uh, do you think that people have fully realized the damage that these climate policies are doing to rural Ireland as a whole? Well, I think, of course, the people in the Midlands fully understand the impact that it's had. I'd say even the local shopkeeper understands because he's not going to have the same custom coming in the doors when all his people in his parish don't have the money. Um, and they're having to, you know, maybe move abroad or they've had to take jobs in the likes of the cities, maybe travelling an hour and a half to work every day. So I think the biggest impact is going to be on the immediate locality. Um, but as for people in the cities, no, I don't think they understand. They definitely don't. Um, people in other rural areas, I think, can sympathise with them because they've probably seen something similar occur in their own in their own locality, be it maybe a small factory closes down or an industry is taken away. Um, so I think you can definitely sympathise with what they've had to go through. Why do you think it is that the Green Party has almost no elected TDs in rural areas and almost all of their political representation is in major cities? Number one, they're not wanted. They wouldn't be accepted in a lot of rural communities in Ireland because their ideas are idealistic, they're not realistic. Um, they're not in touch with what actually needs to be done in, in rural Ireland. They're not talking about, you know, planting or making a nice biodiversity centre in my locality. They're just on about maybe taxing me and telling me I can't keep any more cows. Um, that's what they're more interested in. And I think they appeal to people in the cities because they sell it in such a way that, you know, oh look, we're doing great work. We're doing great work outside of the city, outside of the pale is where it matters the most. Um, and that way then at the weekends you can go off with your kids and you can go on a cycle track that we built after we shut down a whole industry and uh, maybe knock down a forest in the meantime. But it's okay, we're doing great work. That is that is the image they're selling. And I think that's why it's so easily bought up when people are disconnected from rural Ireland. What would you say to someone who argued that these green policies are necessary to save the planet and that farmers are being irresponsible through their work or something along those lines? Irish farmers are among the best farmers in the world. We do the most um, to promote the land. At the end of the day, it's, it's our income. You're not going to you know, uh, misuse or not look after your income. Um, it's in our interest to look after the natural world around us. They don't believe that and they don't want to give the proper incentives in place. They'd rather slap an extra tax on something, collect the money, than say to a farmer, you know what, we'd like you to go out and plant 40 trees by within the next six months. In your hedgerows, wherever the case may be, plant the 40 trees and we'd be very appreciative of that. They're not asking for that, they're asking for money. This, and with everything, it is boiling down to money. And the biggest question is, where is this money actually getting spent? 
because we're not seeing it. It's not being shown as to where it goes. Their wages go up every year, but nothing else seems to go up at our end of things. We're constantly told that our prices are okay and not to be complaining. You're obviously quite young for a farmer and you hear a lot of farmers talking about how people, you know, their children and so on, aren't following in their footsteps and that the industry is kind of dying a slow death. Do you think that farming will be a lot more financially viable if the government was to lift all of these kinds of restrictions and policies that it's imposing on the country? I think it could save it a little bit. It's not even a case that they have to lift every policy. Some of the policies can be beneficial brought on by government. They can be beneficial um, in the long term for, as I said, keeping the, the natural surroundings in good nick. Um, but as a young person, you know, there are so many people my age who want to be involved in the family farm, but it's not financially viable anymore because of the constant caps and, 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 and cuts that they're making. And the government do not represent the Irish farmer. They let the likes of the beef barons walk all over them with prices. Um, there's no proper regulatory authority for it. And, you know, a lot of TDs are good to come and stand outside factory gates and shake hands and say, we stand in solidarity with farmers. But it was shown that each and every one of them went and signed off on, on the bill. They voted yes. So they're two-faced. That is what it, what it bottoms down to because they don't have any incentive to support the farmers when their wages are too good and there's too much money involved elsewhere that we're not hearing about. Do you think we market Irish farming in the right way or do you think our, our advertising of the products that our nation produces are up to scratch? I think abroad, I think our products are probably very well um, marketed, but to our own consumers at home here in Ireland, to the people in the cities that need to kind of know more, they need to understand that we have the best welfare when it comes to animals, the best production system. Um, and, you know, Irish farmers are very much uh, special and unique in their way that we're always looking to do better by what we all already are doing. Um, and I don't think that is, is shown enough to the consumer in Ireland. It's definitely not shown enough to people in the likes of the urban and city areas. Just as a young person um, with the different caps and things coming in in the future, I think it's going to be very hard for people to see a future um, especially there's even talks at the moment that you know children of a farmer won't be allowed to build houses on their land anymore and things like that and um, it's causing a lot of upset and uh, it's causing a lot of uncertainty and what inevitably is going to cause it's going to cause a lot of problems in in families and it's going to cause divisions of families in the future um, and it's going to leave a lot of valleys like this probably go silent because people won't be allowed to they actually will not be allowed to, to live where they grew up. And that's gonna, that's gonna be sad to see places like this kind of left empty.